So when I say that I teach Georgian, I often get a question, am I Georgian? So no, I'm not Georgian. So what really happened uh, that I learned Georgian in the first place and also what helped me when learning Georgian as well as how I ended up really as a person teaching Georgian and also writing study books. This is in today's episode of our podcast. Welcome to the Caucasus podcast where we talk about literature, culture, history and more. The Caucasus podcast is brought to you by Enzitni Caucasus, languages of the Caucasus. Let's get started with today's episode. So before we dive in into the topic, I just want to remind you that each and every episode of the Caucasus podcast, as well as each and every Georgian lesson that we have on our YouTube channel, you will find on our website as well in the form of article and always and so with today's episode as well, the link to uh, directly to this article you will find in the description. Okay, so let's start with today's episode of the Caucasus podcast. So once upon a time, there was a nation that decided to organize a revolution and they took a rose as a symbol of that revolution. So I feel like this is like a fairy tale beginning and this is exactly how I feel, to be honest, or maybe a myth or a legend, uh, how it's my started um, my life with the Caucasus, let's say, because it was so many years ago that I really uh, believe and think that it was uh, so so much time ago. Uh, so I often get questions how it really happened that I ended up uh, learning Georgian and I ended up uh, teaching then Georgian. So uh, everything started, I would say, like long story short, with my uh, study and in Georgia and Georgian University. So how it is like, how can you really study at Georgian University? So long story short, in my case, I was studying political science in Poland and decided uh, to have a specialization in democratization processes of the South Caucasus. For for my master's thesis, I needed to choose just one country. So I decided Georgia because I remembered uh, um, like how few years before that time I saw on the news uh, in Poland, Mikhail Saakashvili leading people to Georgian parliament and then when being already in the parliament drinking Edward Shevardnadze's tea. So that was exactly the moment, yes, it was many years before that, that I thought, yes, this region is really fascinating. That is what what happened. So when deciding for my master thesis, I decided and went for like focusing just on Georgia and then I thought I cannot really write uh, that this is just sitting in Poland. So I uh, just I have to go there and find out more about about this country and do some field research as well. Yeah. So uh, my friend of a friend of a friend, <laughs> it, is, as it is, I think, still in Georgia to some extent. Uh, so via those connections, I was contacted um, with Ilya Chavchavadze University and they let me study there. Like on purpose, I say they, they let me study there because on that time there was no exchange programs with my university. There was no, in, in this faculty I was interested in, they, there was no programs for foreigners starting so that is why I assume <laughs> they just said okay come so I, and I'm till now uh, very grateful for that but the only case like the catch the catch was there that they had as I mentioned no student exchange programs so the only option for me there was to study with other Georgian students so it means to study in Georgian yeah. So the other option that I had at that time, it was several years ago, uh, was to study at Tbilisi State University and there study in English. But the case is that the program that was there available was very expensive for me that time. And I was like, no, no way I could uh, pay for it for one year to study to study there. So uh, I know that for now it has changed uh, a little bit and you know the prices are different uh, and so on and so forth but that was the reality at this uh, several years ago and so I decided in that case when I have those two options I will just invest uh, those money 
into Georgian language lessons because it was like on my own I had to figure out how to know Georgian and to be honest sometimes I wonder if I would still go for it right now but uh, then I thought uh, that time I thought I will just somehow learn in between this Georgian language it it cannot be that's hard to learn and I will manage somehow so the reality is, yes, I did it, I managed, and I learned it somehow in between. So as far as I know, uh, when we are talking about studying in Georgia, there are currently uh, many more, and there are existing several uh, programs for foreigners on different universities, not only on those two I mentioned, but there are much more currently um, that uh, you can apply uh, to and study there for a semester, for example, or two, like a student exchange, as well there are many more students uh, a student exchange possibilities for you as well depending of course on your country and university and also to study uh, like whole um, doing whole bachelor or whole masters in Georgia this is also uh, possible depending on the university so uh, if you are interested in that just you know pick uh, pick the topic and then uh, choose some universities if you have some questions you may also let us know in the comments maybe we try to advise you some so I mentioned already how it looked for me yes we know that so how it is to study Georgian language in a you know, intensive uh, way so what I have not mentioned in this whole story till now it is that when I came to Georgia uh, two weeks before uh, the beginning of my academic year and it was the second time I was in Georgia because I decided like before deciding um, that I want to study here for a year uh, I went for like two weeks trip just to more or less to, to see the city to see Tbilisi because it was winter so mainly in Tbilisi uh, to maybe find some study books to study Georgian in between but it ended up as you may assume <laughs> yeah because the moment I arrived two weeks before my academic year I knew to be frank only good morning and say goodbye in Jordan and that was it so the faculty um, employees uh, on Inej of Chavate uh, were I think really surprised <laughs> that I showed up and won't actually study there uh, in Jordan although we were at that moment talking only in English um, and uh, I think there are two factors in it. First of all, please remember, and this is what I have not mentioned yet, the moment when I was start starting my studies, this one year I spent on university in, in, uh, in Tbilisi, it was September 2008. So September 2008 is, it is just after the war that was in Georgia in, in August. So that could have been one of the surprises in general for many people that I decided um, to come to, to Georgia no matter like what let's say uh, and the other option like the other part was that I really couldn't speak Georgian <laughs> at all um, but I have to uh, say this although they were surprised till that uh, day I have nothing but a positive experience uh, from Ilya Chavchavadze University and I of course I do not know each and every people, each and every person working there etc uh, but all the experience I had it is just very very positive and I have studied in between in different places and had some different contacts uh, with other universities from other countries as well and I may say this is the best one I have seen seen uh, from especially from the perspective of like how they approach students and how they help students etc so uh, like big shout out at uh, you thank you very much for all the work that you are putting there so as far as my studying Georgian is concerned so I had classes uh, four days um, uh, four hours to be more precise four hours a day five days a week so it was approximately uh, 20 hours per week uh, yeah so it was quite intense and uh, besides that I tried to uh, learn at home uh, to revise a little bit and also trying to understand at least a bit of uh, Georgian during lessons during um, daily life so maybe one of the things that uh, you may be interested in so uh, if uh, I would have possibility to change anything in that studying process would I have changed anything so yes so uh, I thought maybe 
that would be interesting for you as well, uh, because first of all, I would have less lessons that I had and more focused on studying at home on my own, more to repeat and revise the material like the new Georgian lessons that I had already. So this is one thing. And the second is that I would for sure, if I were starting right now, I would for sure study more with the apps like Memorize or Quizlet, but please remember it was over 15 years ago, so the situation with applications, with internet, with social media, it was totally different. So so that is <laughs> that is the case there. So what really helped me uh, a lot, I think, when I gaining this fluency, being able to study, and this is something that um, I also mentioned in our mini course, how to study Georgian. It it is um, that my teacher of that time, after more or less three months uh, of uh, me uh, studying Georgian with her, so in general, me studying Georgian, and um, she started with me reading during classes original texts, original texts that were connected uh, to my field of study. Yeah, so so at the beginning, I have to admit, it was horrible. <laughs> I think I was very stressed because there are lots of people, lots of things that I couldn't understand. Uh, but after some time, I noticed that I much faster can understand and speak during classes. And that was a game changer for me, really, um, because uh, then I was able really to use uh, this vocab, use Georgian language in my daily situations. And in my particular case, my daily situations, that was at university, during lectures, during discussions that we had, or to write maybe some thesis, etc. Yeah, so everything that you do as a, as a student, besides just living, uh, going to grocery, etc. So one of the re examples of the results is that after six months uh, being in Georgia, so studying in Georgia, at this almost the same time, I was able to prepare like half an hour presentation in Georgian and to lead the Q&A also in Georgian afterwards. Yeah, so just to show you how it really worked. And I mentioned that this is the part that the story I mentioned also in the course that we have, so how to study Georgian. This is our mini course that you can take parts uh, in it just by si signing on our website and there are five lessons uh, there uh, that send the, the methods that you can learn how to study Georgian. So um, this is about the methods and the way how to study Georgian. Yeah, so the link for that, if you want to participate, you if you want to uh, learn it on your own, uh, then you will find in the episode description as well. One of the ways to learn, let's say, much faster, it is, of course, when you are surrounded by the Georgian language. And this is what helped me as well. And you can do it at home, not only living in, in Georgia, but you have to just focus more <laughs> on it. So I watched Georgian TV. I listened to the radio wherever I could. And this is something that I do as well now living in Poland. And I was communicating with everyone that I could in Georgian. So for example, I was asking all the time the grocery shop owner um, about what is the name of the fruit and what is the name of that vegetable. Yeah, so that is what I do. So um, when we are talking about studies, maybe let's focus about finding Georgian language teacher, because this is also something like not only of my story, how I started teaching, teaching Georgian, but also from the perspective how you can uh, find a good teacher and how it worked uh, for me as well. So fast forward this crazy story a little bit that we have that uh, several years later like more than 15 years later i am teaching georgian as well but firstly we, before going to our story I uh, need to give a shout out uh, to my first uh, teacher of Georgian language. This is Rusiko. She no longer teaches Georgian, so you cannot study with her, unfortunately. But she uh, was uh, like on that time, uh, she gave me during classes what I needed. I also told you uh, uh, already about the story that she started <laughs> with me uh, reading the newspapers, reading magazines, but also she gave me lots of information during classes about the culture, about traditions, about you know society, etc., history, um, that were very helpful in my study because remember that I went to Georgia on that time uh, to uh, 
study and to prepare uh, my research for for my masters. Yeah. So and as well, uh, she with her husband Archin, they helped me also a lot and advice from the perspective like my field research about the democratization because I was conducting lots of um, lots of interviews with different politicians with different uh, specialist experts uh, from the field so that is that is the case uh, as well and uh, by the way uh, why I'm saying that is also by the way uh, Rusiko was the first person <laughs> that's a, also a funny story I think she was the first person ever uh, to tell me that maybe I should try teaching basics of Georgian this is what I already knew at that time to uh, my other Polish friends as a way of revise the knowledge etc. So it all started like that. Yeah, that was the idea and so um, maybe from the perspective of how to find this good Georgian uh, teacher I want to share with you some of my thoughts and some of my experiences because I've seen over the years many Georgian teachers and some of them were okay, okay, very good. Uh, fabulous <laughs> in the, what they were doing so some of my thoughts so good Georgian teacher for me is someone who leads you throughout this process so not just gives you the handouts and different st study materials just for your own and to study and memorize it on your own and uh, so keep in mind that not every native speaker can be a good teacher especially that there are not that many good study materials that they can use so it is very currently very much still dependent on the teacher as well how they will provide you with uh, this knowledge with this information and lead you through that process so that is why if you were choosing for example and we are thinking about finding Georgian teacher for me now currently I would always ask about their experience in explaining grammar and teaching adults this is very important and also currently there are already studies like at university for future teachers of Georgian language as a foreign language because it is completely different even if you are philologist of Georgian philology uh, you may uh, you have to add really some additional skills into teaching foreigners your language yeah so because you have to understand like thinking a way that foreigners are thinking a little bit so that is that is really the case I met many teachers along the way as I mentioned and uh, the ones I study currently with uh, are one of the best I think I saw and they are like checking all the boxes that I mentioned yes I'm studying still because currently for example uh, I'm more focused on you know learning to be a sworn interpreter and translator and just to focus on like deepening my knowledge of Jordan as it is I think always is that it is not the moment that you can stop and say of course I I learn Georgian I need I know everything <laughs> it may be that I need uh, I know everything I need currently but still some Georgian uh, language in general some language always there is for you to learn so that is that is how it's what I would focus on if I were you when uh, finding a good Georgian teacher so as we are in today's episode talking about uh, learning Georgian as well, if you know already some Georgian then you are thinking about, oh yes, you are right, there are not that many study materials and you are a little bit struggling on struggling a lot with Georgian verbs, maybe our uh, book, our ebook to be more precise, 50 Georgian verbs will be a help for you you will find there like 50 uh, common uh, most common or common verbs that are used that are conjugated in five most uh, common used form especially if you are a beginner or just starting this intermediate level in Georgian and you have not only conjugated so all the forms written with the cases as well but also with the example sentences so if you need this particular help or you are looking for something that will help you just to uh, clear the mind with all the verbs and all the verb forms that you know you will find the link direct link in the episode description for this book so check it out on your own 
Okay, so let's come back to my story in that case. So how it was really for me, like how it was with me and teaching Georgian, maybe like this. So sometime after coming back to Poland, so after my studies, I got from time to time, I was getting questions uh, like, can I teach someone the basics of Georgian because I know it already. So the word spread out and I started preparing also like having more and more, uh, let's call them students or people with whom I was working. I started preparing also my own and additional study materials. And in the meantime, I also started working in a financial sector and IT. So I got experience as a manager, as a trainer or conducting workshops for small and big companies and also a business coach. So I think uh, this uh, experience also really helped me like transfer those modern methods of teaching adults that we have in business as well into study programs of Georgian. So maybe that also was the case with my journalist and peer experience because when I was living in Georgia I was working as well but this is the topic for a different episodes um, and I was working there later on as well in Georgia. So I think there are several uh, factors that may be that helped me into combining uh, to combining those elements uh, and me all the time uh, learning, like in the meantime, learning myself uh, Georgian and preparing the materials because as I mentioned, there are not that many uh, good study materials still available. So maybe that is the case why I very often get and I, along the way I was getting feedback that I can like teach Georgian almost anyone <laughs> almost anyone yeah so that is that is maybe the uh the case here and this is how it really uh, happens uh, with uh, with my story how i ended up maybe in in the moment that we are currently so maybe it sound it will sound or may sound a little bit cheesy but uh, one of the reasons and main reason why i decided uh, to growing more into the direction of Yenzitni uh, Kaukazu languages of the Caucasus to our publishing house is that I wanted you know, for you to have better starts with learning Georgian as I had for example because as I mentioned there was not that many study books there was only on that time one good study book which is Biliki I mentioned it I think in different materials as well it is still available and still quite uh, uh, good I would recommend still it to, to many uh, people and it was the, it, in general uh, it was very hard currently it's just hard I think to find the materials besides of course our our website uh, it was very hard to find anything about Georgian language that it is modern way in a way that you can use it instantly to learn etc yeah so that is the reason why first of all we thought about building our website and all the materials that we have there on blog as a mini study material that you can use and start the all new round, just like you new know, bits of, of lessons and other materials that we have on YouTube channel, for example, as well in in the, this form, like micro learning uh, ab- approach. And uh, I wanted just to give you a better possibility, let's say, to start learning Georgian faster. Already, uh, I think it is more than 15 years, 15, not 50, 15 years passed. Um, and there was, as I mentioned, and still there are not that many uh, good study books and not that much uh, has changed. Although there are many uh, more opportunities, luckily for you uh, to find something online. And I really wanted um to like make it more available and so not only if you have to go to Georgia and to Tbilisi and there to find the teacher and the, to find the material just to make sure everything is available no matter where on earth <laughs> you are currently yeah that you can still learn Georgia yeah so that is why I teamed up with experienced um, not only teachers but also other experts in the field uh, of, of the Caucasus in general uh it's a big shout out to our smaller like inner and extended team of Yenzitni Kaukazu languages of the Caucasus it's huge 
pleasure working uh, with you and uh, we our goal in general is that we can bring currently Georgia but soon I do hope the whole Caucasus to your home and phone just to, for it to be available okay I can talk for hours about my experience with learning Georgian and also how I learn currently and because it's quite different from in general what uh, I was uh, learning and the way I was learning at the beginning mm, and also about my me living in Georgia in general for all over I think two years in general and going back and forth and traveling there uh, but I do not want this episode to last for hours so that is why let's do like that if you have any questions or you are seeking any advice etc maybe from my story um so just drop me a message and i will just tell you in a second how to do it and drop me a message uh, and i will i will try to uh, explain and and then i give you answer and if it will be like lots of additional ones we can do with like another episode of this sort so you can either dm me on our social media of uh, languages of the caucasus you will find languages of the caucasus on instagram or in uh, facebook so just uh, send us a direct message the other option is just put comments under this video if you are watching that on uh, youtube for example and the uh, other option is just send me an email so whatever it is uh, like more suitable for you just send me an email especially if you are already subscribing to our weekly caucasian mail our newsletter so just reply hit reply to one of the um, one of the letters, one of the emails that you receive. Uh, if you are not yet our subscriber and you want to receive from me, it is, I'm writing those, those emails on a weekly basis. If you want to receive it, just you can also join our Caucasian mail and the link for that is in the description of this particular episode. So if you have any additional questions, uh, send me those. I will answer all of them uh, to you and maybe we'll do another episode. Yeah, so this is this is how we'll do uh, not to uh, make it like several hours long episode and also I'm very very curious because I was quite nervous preparing this episode to be honest I'm very curious whether this type of episodes as well is interesting for you so I like more personal side and my story of my life <laughs> a little bit at least part of it the story of my life whether this is interesting for you as well and those types of episodes should we prepare more of that so as well let us know in the comments in this uh, in this case let us know in the comments or of course let us know by liking it if you like this particular episode like us on on youtube and wherever you are watching uh that yeah and also remember to subscribe remember to join our newsletter so then we are able always uh, to let you know that something new uh, came up like new uh, Caucasus podcast episode or maybe new Georgian lessons that we are also publishing here so there are their options the last thing for today if you like this episode or if you like in general other episodes of our podcast send that to one of your friends that is also interested in georgia or in caucasus in general and it will help us a lot just to go around the globe let's say and really I connect with everyone that is interested in that region and spread the information, make sure that the information about the region and about the languages are available to everyone who wants uh, to learn uh, Georgian, who wants to know more about Caucasus. So that helps us a lot. Okay, thank you very much uh, for being with me uh, along this journey <laughs> about uh, my study Georgian and me teaching a Georgian language. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.